This lesson is going to be talking about rational and irrational numbers. Basically, we want to know how to tell the difference between these, because that's going to help us with our calculations. So first off, a couple of definitions. A rational number, what is it? Well, a rational number is any number that can be expressed in the form of one whole number over another. What we're going to do is we'll just do some quick examples. Now, we can just have our ordinary number of 3. We can pretend that that 3 is a 3 over a 1. That's a whole number over a whole number. That's a rational number. We're happy. Our ordinary fraction of 4 over 7, something we can all deal with, that is a rational number as well. We can start jumping into the mixed numbers and have 3 and 1 half. That can be transformed. That can still be a rational number. As it says in the bottom there, remember that we have learnt how to convert recurring decimals into fractions. So if we have something like 0 0.6 recurring, we know how to transform that into a fraction so it can be represented as one whole number over another. So we're happy. All those are perfect examples of a rational number. Opposite to this is an irrational number. And that is a number that cannot be shown on a piece of paper as a fraction of two whole numbers. Now, the only real way that you can do this is by having a number that has an infinite number of decimal places, much like a recurring decimal, but there's no repeating feature about them. There's no generalization we can make. It is just one long set of numbers that don't repeat at all. A perfect first example of this that some number that you all have dealt with is pi. Pi is 3.14 stuff and it just keeps going and going and going. It never stops. So what we can have a look at is any number that needs a letter or a symbol to represent it is going to be an irrational number. Let's have a look at some examples and we will pick out the ones whether they're rational or irrational. So 4 over 25. We had a look at that. We can convert 4 over 25. Well, in 4 there is 25s, so that can be 22 over 5. Therefore, it's a rational number. All right, what about negative square root of 7? If you try that on your calculator, you are going to get a decimal number that never ends. It'll end on your calculator. You're going to run out of screen, but you're not going to notice any pattern about those decimal places. So we're going to label that one as irrational straight away. That one's one that we don't want to see. All right, 0 0.6 recurring. We had a look at that in our example as a rational number. Remember that if you let n equal your recurring number, multiply it by any number of tens to get the decimal point after one set of the repeating features. So in this case we only need to multiply it by one ten, and that makes our number 6.6 .6 recurring. What we're going to do then is we're going to take away an n from both sides, and we will be left with, bringing it over here, 9n equals 6. Once we've got that, it becomes as simple as removing any coefficients left on the n. So we're going to divide by 9. So n is equal to 6 over 9, which we can simplify to 2 over 3 as a matter of consistency. And that's one whole number over another. So that is a rational number. All right, the cube root of negative 8. Now, remember the cube root is a little different to a square root. And it is saying, what number can you multiply by itself three times so that it gives you the number under the sign? So if we have a look at the negative 8, if we want to multiply a number three times together, it has to be a negative number to give us a negative answer. So we're going to have a negative times a negative times a negative. And if we try 2, 2, and 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, and an odd number of negative signs is going to make our answer be negative. So that is going to equal our negative 8. So we can label that one as a rational number because it has a rational answer of negative 2. And our last example is 5 pi. Remember we talked about pi being an irrational number just because it never ends. That's the reason it has a symbol is because no one would be bothered to write out an infinite decimal place every time they wanted to use pi. So we can label that one as an irrational number straight away. If you've got an irrational number and you make it bigger, it's not necessarily getting more irrational, but it's not changing that fact. 
Okay, that's all for today. Just the basic definition between the two. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.